Good morning, and welcome back to Today in the Word. Hi, I'm Glenn Schaefer, and I want to thank you for joining us as we walk through the book of Romans. Today, we're in chapter 8. We're going to be in verse 26 down through verse 28. These few verses speak volumes to us on the intercession of the Holy Spirit in us. In this passage, Paul is addressing the aspect of us living this Christian life in these bodies. And then he mentions about living this Christian life in this present world. That the pain or suffering or afflictions that are light cannot be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in this present time that we live. What we walk through cannot be compared. And he walks through these passages explaining that the Spirit of God is at work in us and that all creation is groaning and waiting for the revelation of the sons of God, looking toward that resurrection. And we covered this subject as he mentions the fact that we have the first fruits of the Spirit in us and just like all creation is groaning, waiting for the deliverance from the corruption, he moves right into verse 26 and says, Likewise, the Spirit, this is the Holy Spirit, capital S, likewise the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, or some translations say inabilities, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The King James says we don't know what and ought. We don't know what we should be praying for and how we ought to be praying. We just have a sense in us by the Holy Spirit that creation is out of order. Now I believe that this is a great principle of teaching of the Holy Spirit praying through us in intercessory prayer. Now, in context, it's speaking about this ongoing in us, that the Spirit of God in us makes these groanings, that we're aware that creation itself is still presently under this curse that it was subjected to through the fall, that in the end, in the resurrection, when time is no more, this whole creation will be redeemed as well. But right now, presently, we are redeemed by our spirit being made new, our souls being renewed day by day. Don't be conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of the word. And then eventually, in the resurrection, these bodies will be raised and made new. Now, he's using this idea that presently, while we live in these bodies, we have the deposit, the earnest of the Holy Spirit in us, working God's grace in and through us. And so he's using that term when he says, likewise the Spirit also helps us in our infirmities, as I believe the King James says, but in our weaknesses, in our inabilities, when we don't know what we should pray for as we ought. We just have a sense, I need to pray. Has that ever happened to you? I just need to pray. This is where I believe we need to be trained and taught to depend upon the Holy Spirit. I believe this is a time that Pentecostals and Methodists, old-time Methodists and different ones and holiness used to call it mourners or groanings in the Spirit because that's what the Bible talks about here, where you give yourself over as a vessel. Now, this is going on in us all the time. But there are seasons of prayer that I want to address that you don't know what and ought, but the Spirit of God moves on you and you just need to pray. Now listen to this. He says, For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us. In other words, on our ability, in us, with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, even though I believe that tongues are available for believers today, that's not what this is talking about. Because tongues can be uttered. It's an articulation. This here is groanings. 
inside sighs and groanings which cannot be articulated. It's just, oh, it's a cry out of your heart, out of your spirit. Because not only is all creation groaning, but there are incidences that the Holy Spirit brings upon us as intercessors to pray. He says in verse 27, how, he says, now he who searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Now we know this is the second member of the Godhead, the Lord. For Psalms tells us the Lord searches the hearts. For he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Holy Spirit. Well, certainly he would because he, the Holy Spirit, is God. <laughs> but watch this. He who searches the hearts, this is the Lord, knows what's in the mind of the Holy Spirit which dwells in us. And he, talking about Christ now, makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So you not only have the Holy Spirit abiding in someone, making intercession with groanings, but you have Christ sitting on His throne, who searches the hearts, knows the mind of the Spirit, and therefore God Himself quickens the Holy Spirit in that believer <laughs> according to the will of the Father. And it says in verse that He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So what I want you to see here is it's the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit in us that we feel the yearnings and the turnings and the groanings of the Spirit. Oh, I just need to pray. Oh, I just need to pray. My wife said to me last week, I just need some time to pray. Oh, I need some time to pray. Now, that is working in us at all times, but not to the awareness of the acuteness that I'm talking about. When the Spirit of God moves on me of intercession, sometimes shepherding and pastoring the church, I don't know what and ought, but I know I need to pray. I might know there's a situation going on over here, but I don't know what and ought. <laughs> I just know I need to pray. And I begin to pray. Yes, I'll pray in the Spirit but make myself available to pray in the Spirit with understanding, maybe also in tongues, but this groaning, oh, Spirit of God, oh, Spirit of God. He's making intercession with groanings which cannot be uttered. That's the Holy Spirit in me, and He who searches the hearts of the Lord knows the mind of the Holy Spirit in me. For He's making intercession for the saints. See, I may be praying for the saints, and I don't know what I'm praying for as I ought, but He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. But the Spirit of God in me is praying out the will of the Father, of Christ the head of the church, who sits on the throne, who knows the heart and the mind of the Spirit, and He makes intercession for the saints. And the Spirit of God in me is wanting to make uh, intercession with groanings, and so I give myself over as a vessel of prayer that the will of God from the throne room would be prayed into the earth. The will of God called intercessory prayer. Wow. And then you go into verse 28 that we always quote out of context. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. How do we know that? Because we're called according to His purpose, but also prayer by the Holy Spirit in us is being made through groanings from Christ who sits on the throne, who knows the mind of the Spirit, and He makes intercession for the saints. God is praying through us. Wow, 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 wow. This is not only how we live the Christian life, that the Spirit is always at work in us, but through your seasons of prayer and intercession, I want to encourage you to be willing to give yourself, get along with God and say, Holy Spirit, pray through me. I mean, just me teaching on this, I sense a stirring in my heart, the intercession of the Holy Spirit. You're not given to walk this out by yourself. You're not even given to pray by yourself. 
What a win-win situation for us. So, Father, I pray by your Spirit that you would reveal to those who are watching and listening and reading these Scriptures the power of the Holy Spirit in us to make intercession. And Christ, that you're sitting on the throne and you know the mind of the Spirit and you know what people need. There are people that are watching this that need to give themselves over to prayer of intercession for their family, for ministries, for work, for the kingdom, for the purpose of God, that you would pray through us by your Spirit with groanings which cannot be uttered, crying out to you according to the will of God. May that be a part of our life. In Jesus' name, wow. I hope this has blessed you. If you have not subscribed, would you do me a favor and subscribe? I'm wanting to get the teaching out. We started this during the COVID, and we've just continued it because we believe we need to stay in the Word of God. We're in chapter 8. Don't miss the next few lessons because it gets into some very powerful theology. God bless you, and thank you for joining me today in the Word.